Eugene Wigner, the Nobel Prize winning uh, quantum physicist, presented this argument based upon what he called the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. And what Wigner noted is that mathematics is not pursued uh, for reasons of empirical adequacy, the way scientific theories are. In science, you only postulate such entities as are warranted by the scientific evidence. But that's not the way mathematics works. Mathematics adopts maximal principles where you posit as many mathematical entities as you can short of, uh, of contradiction. And therefore, mathematics is pursued for what Wigner called aesthetic reasons, not um, empirical reasons, it having to do with mathematical beauty. Moreover, these mathematical entities, as you just described them, even if they exist, if you adopt a platonic or realist uh, view of these mathematical objects, they are by definition causally effete. That is to say, because they're abstract, they have no causal effect upon anything. Abstract objects like numbers and sets and functions and so forth exist beyond space and time, and they have no causal powers, and therefore they are impotent to affect the physical world. And this is one of the mysteries that Roger Penrose was so tortured by. How do you explain the fact that this abstract, causally effete mathematical realm is so descriptive of the physical phenomena which he as a physicist explores? And it seems to me that the best explanation is the one that uh, Plato, in fact, gave, namely that God can look to the mathematical realm and fashion a world on the basis of the mathematical model that he prefers. And a view similar to this was defended by the ancient Jewish philosopher Philo of Alexandria, who was contemporaneous with the New Testament authors. Philo argued that the conceptual universe, the conceptual world, exists in the mind of God himself. It's not distinct from God, as Plato thought. Rather, these are divine ideas that exist in God's mind, and that God then fashions the physical universe on the basis of the mental model that he had in mind that he prefers. And I have argued that this theistic perspective provides a far more plausible explanation of the mathematical applicability to physical phenomena than naturalism is capable of. And I formulated the argument very simply in the following way. Uh, if God does not exist, then the applicability of mathematics to physical phenomena is just a happy coincidence. <laughs> Premise two, the applicability of mathematics is not just a happy coincidence. Three, therefore God exists. I think that this is a surprisingly powerful argument for the existence of a transcendent, uh, omniscient, cosmic creator.